Welcome to episode 8. Let's see. Let's see if we can continue our little upswing here. I probably jinxed myself and we're gonna get sick cooler <laughs> this episode. Top pair plays very easy here, especially bad top pair. Just play call call and then river is mostly folding if he decides to triple barrel. Um, because it's, I don't, I'm not sure if it's something zoom specific. But in zoom there's a lot of players who double barrel bluff a lot. And whenever they put in the third barrel, suddenly it's, it's like 10% bluffs. Only. It's pretty weird, to be honest. Because I'm not aware of any sites or anyone recommending this type of strategy, but I see it over and over again. And throughout all stakes that I have played as well, doesn't matter if it's NL2 or NL25, you see it everywhere. Okay, I'll be overfolding here. Nice check. This is very unlikely to be a bluff, and then his value bets so are just, yeah. We beat some of them if he bets ace 10 like that, for example, but it's going to be way too much value in my eyes. Let's raise. Actually, let's just call. I definitely want to see a turn here. If, if I raise and t3 bets, we've got a problem. If he jams the river, this is. Even the sizing is very. It's probably never ever a bluff. Wow, this is... <laughs> That's the thing about poker. If you bet yourself, like I would have played bet, bet, jam, river. No problem at all. But if they play a, a triple barrel line, it's just so value heavy. I guess we call. But, yeah. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's exactly what I mean. So basically, because of how he played his aces here, we actually we actually made a profit of 54 big blinds. Because if he 4-bets, we, we stack off and I lose everything, every time. Because he decided to just call. And because he decided to not jam the river, I mean, actually against the jam on the river, I probably fold it. I probably fold anyway. So, yeah. His decision to not 4-bet basically made me a profit of 54 because I would have lost that every time. This last bit in his stack here. I 
And it's also in his shoes I would never just flat ace the out of position, so... And I'm pretty sure he would also always stack off with kings or call the forbid and then stack off with something like that. So... Yeah, in this specific hand I lost money, but in the long run I'm making money here against this guy. Because of... How he played it compared to how I would play it, and we get the doom turn here. This is the worst possible turn, obviously, by far. So, rest in peace, that. And it's very likely that he has an A side. Now he checks back the turn, so that's good news. But it could still be that he just has an ace and wants a trap because he's already so deep, so committed. And we get very unlucky here with the queens as well. Yeah, and sometimes that happens, sometimes you're just unlucky. So this guy had king-queen. Interesting. It's an interesting decision for him to call the flop and not bluff the turn or river. So he gets the passive fun player tag. We could bet small here too. Just to fold out random stuff. But we can still do it on the turn. It's also that if they now decide to call Jack 10 of Hearts for whatever reason to the sizing, they're actually making a mistake. Whereas if I do it on the flop and they decide to call Jack 10 of Hearts, they're actually not making a mistake because I'm not betting big enough to deny their equity. Like if I bet one third pot, they get odds to call 20% equity and if they have Jack 10 of Hearts against my 7s, they obviously have more than 20% equity. So. Even though it's obviously a little bit weirder in multi-way pots, but you know what I mean. I'll just fold here. We could decide to uh, the hand isn't finished yet, but if we had the ace of diamonds there we could have decided to continue. Drawing to the second nut flush backdoor is a dangerous game. If you are not the initiator of the bets. Also the gut shot we had are not that powerful, the overcards are pretty obvious, so basically you want to whenever you draw, you want to draw to draws that have implied, and the more implied the better the draw. And sometimes it doesn't matter if the the likelihood of hitting your draw is high. So for example, if you have two overcards and a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw, yeah, you have a lot of ways of hitting one of those draws. So the likelihood of hitting one of those draws is very high. But because they are all obvious, like the ace to the five straight is obvious, the backdoor flush is the only thing that's not that obvious, but the, the runouts on which those will occur, where you do hit your backdoor flush draw, they, they just won't allow you to get any implied. And then the overcards, yeah, if you check all the flop and turn as a king or an ace and you call another bet or whatever, obviously you have something against king, right? So, yeah, it's just all, all in all, sometimes a simple gut shot, a single gut shot, can be better than a some combo draw simply because of how well disguised it is if you hit it 
and then the implies are just through the roof. But obviously it always depends on the situation. Okay, last hand here. And we get a fold. Okay, that's it for this episode. See you in the next one. Leave a like or dislike and a comment if you like. Bye bye.